You're listening to Articulate with your hosts, Kevin Kramer and Sean Gillespie, your go-to guys for art tips, techniques, and general artist ramblings. Presented by DrawingAndColoring.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Articulate, the podcast where we talk about everything art. Yeah. To some degree. It's true. And today's subject is style. Style. We're going to be talking about style in general, genres of style, a tiny little bit. We're not going to delve into that too much, but we're going to talk about how you can develop your own style. Yeah, that yeah. should be pretty interesting. Yeah. So with these podcasts, what we've kind of started to do, and then, which I think is a good way to start a podcast about any subject, is to start with a general definition. So, yes, definitely. What is our definition of style, Kevin? The definition that I found today was a manner of doing something, you know, short and sweet. That's it? That's your whole definition? <laughs> that is the whole definition. All right. Well, the one I found was a little bit longer. Okay. Um, Rita, or Rita, sorry, Rita, Rita Gilbert in the uh, book Living with Art defines it as a characteristic or group that we can identify as constant, reoccurring, or coherent. Okay. So, basically... I found something similar like that, but I oh, like yeah? to keep things simple. All right. Yeah, it was similar. So, but that, that it, was a good two. Yeah, and I found a few definitions, but uh, one is, uh, you know, very similar to that one. But basically, the overall gist of it seems to be, from the definitions that I read, is that it's style is what separates your work from other artists. That's yeah. basically it. That's, that. that's basically style. It's what makes your work unique, so that when you look at it, you're like... That's a Kevin Kramer. Exactly. Or that's a Sean Gillespie. Exactly. Which I don't think anybody has ever said that about my work. Maybe I they have yours. Mm, but maybe. I've never I don't heard. Think so. I've never heard anybody say that's a Sean Gillespie. But well, maybe we live in hope. I actually have said that. You've said that to Shane, my friend. Oh, all right. Well, awesome. There we go. So I have a style, and so does Kevin. And there we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Yeah. Um. So before we get rolling in this mm -hmm. one thing that i want to point out is that there's a big difference between style and subject matter uh so like rodrigue right. with his blue dog you know a lot of people think well his, famous blue dog guy. right the famous blue dog you know from from louisiana and a lot of people think well his style is that he paints a blue dog and that's not a style that's a subject matter. Now, the way he paints the blue dog is definitely a style. He definitely has a unique style. Right. He uses blue. He, <laughs> that, that's part of it. But his paintbrush and his strokes and things, he's definitely got a style where if he painted something else, you could be like, well, it might be a Rodrigue, you know, based right. on the exactly. style. You so can see right. his elements, his touch. Exactly. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Portrayed. Style, not subject matter. And that's important. That's important. So what are some different styles of art, Kevin? Well, you know, there are a bunch of different styles mm -hmm. that a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of modern art can fall into today. Oh. That most people usually kind of gravitate towards mm -hmm. either one or another or one that okay. kind of just pulls them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like cubism. There's a lot of... Mm -hmm. I don't really, you know, not too many people do cubism today, I don't think. No, you don't see, I mean, Picasso pretty much nailed pretty much, that one. <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much was like, here, this is mine, yeah. and I'm Hung done. And I, you really, I can't, I mean, Hung probably the there, was, there were definitely some in, in his time frame who were dabbling into cubism, but yeah, I don't know any yeah. artists. I, you could sort of say that Chuck Close has a cubist style he but does, not to it's, some a, it's degree, a whole new it's a whole new thing he's doing with it so which, he's got his own style there you go <laughs> hey he redefined the style see how it goes around see how it Comes becomes circular full circle yeah. But yeah, yeah, Impressionism, Neoclassical, Art Deco, Art Nouveau, Rococo, Baroque, these are all styles. Right. Um, they that, all have their main figures in right. them that all yeah. really kind of define what that style is. Exactly. And then there's little just kind of waves of trickles off. That of, trickles off into different styles. Right. And that's how we get all these other different right. styles. And each of those really deserves its own podcast, and eventually, hopefully, one of these days, we'll get to doing a podcast on each of those. Hopefully. Um, but in general, today, we're just going to be talking about style. And I think, and my research kind of suggests the, that this is true, that style is not really defined by the artists themselves a lot of times, so much yep. as by historians, art historians, as far as genres go. 
Um, okay, so the, yeah, as so far the as, historians are actually creating the genres right. around the artists. Yeah, like if you take a impressionism, you know, you have all these impressionists working uh, uh, in the same style around right. the same time period. Right. A lot of times, you know, Monet and and these other impressionists, they weren't like, I am an impressionist. You know, they may have been. Maybe. Some of them actually. Some of them probably Somebody were. Did, some, but some of them did say. Not it. until that term was defined. And a lot of times it's defined long after these guys are dead and it's like well all of these guys can kind of be lumped into this or guys or girls could right. be lumped into the same category they're they're all their styles are similar so we're going to put them together and lump them together and that's kind of interesting i think so so what you're saying is the artists themselves didn't consciously say i'm an impressionist i'm going to do this this is going to be my style and i'm going to be an impressionist and that's the style i'm going to make or i'm going to be a neoclassical artist and a, a baroque artist you know what i'm saying or do that, you think that those styles kind of bubbled up through their own community as yeah. we're impressionists that's exactly what i think i think that the style i think they painted what they liked what was interesting what was new in that time and as a result, a style emerged. And one of the things that kind of got me to thinking about that was, what is the emerging style now, nowadays? Right, right. And you think about, well, who are the famous artists right now? You've got, you know, two of the biggest that I can think of that are just, you know, new and hip or whatever is uh, mm -hmm. Banksy, which, yeah. you know, I guess he's not the new. Elusive his, yeah, Banksy. Yeah, yeah, the elusive Banksy and Shepard Fairey. I mean, these are guys that are definitely, you know, cutting edge as right. far as art goes. There's a lot of people who don't, consider graffiti art and a lot of people who do and right. that's the same thing with impressionism you had people back then who didn't consider impressionism art as because it wasn't art. yeah as it wasn't realism because it wasn't classic right it wasn't it was just considered garbage or trash art and same way people look at graffiti so who knows 20 years from now 30 years from now maybe people will look back as now as the graffiti period you know so what you're saying is you when you're in it you don't know it that's what I'm saying. Often, oftentimes, not always, there's always the exception that proves the rule. We could be in the graffitiism. Right. We could be in the graffiti period right now, which okay. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes. Well, you got to put not, an ism on it to really gotta make have an it ism. You, you gotta, can't just, with the graffiti period. You got to love your isms. Sounds good, though. It does sound good. I like good. them both. But one thing, <laughs> too, <laughs> well, then, well, then I'll let us move on here, is, uh, you know, a lot of people think, well, if art is, or if style is so hard to define, does style even exist? You know, or, or are we just making it? It up is it just a bunch of hi hats you know sitting in their right. little art historian studios thinking mm, well mm. this is a style and i will Number put two. this in this style and is it subjective well an interesting thing that i found is in 2012 oh the year I, we are for a few more weeks is recent. this year yeah very recent, recent study this time all right uh in 2003 <laughs> i know right yeah that was last time which you know sometimes you can't get current data you know Dang, don't hate it happens don't hate it happens but uh the lawrence technology university in michigan uh had a computer analyze thousands and thousands of paintings mm -hmm. from 34 well-known artists using a specially developed algorithm Okay. You know, com math. computer talk, math, yeah. Ones and zeros. Right. <laughs> but it basically broke down the paintings by their style and hmm. and divided them up into their artistic styles, so whether it's neoclassical, art deco, you know, whatever. And it turns out that their styles exactly matched humans, the historians' styles for those. So really? our impression of what these categories are, are can be broken down into do a mathematic al algorithm. Interesting. So that is crazy. That's so huh. there is definitely a defined style that can be mathematically quantified and is not just how we, our impression of that art. There is an actual aesthetic mathematic thing going on there. That I think is pretty fascinating. That is pretty fascinating. I would like to see these equations. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I want to see. We need some more information on X this. plus Z equals impressionism. <laughs> exactly. Is that how that yeah, works? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to talk to those folks up in Michigan we'll and find out. We'll definitely have to look into that. <laughs> right. So let's go into how do you find your own style. What yes, do, yes. How yeah. do you find your how own style? How do you style? find that? This do elusive you... style. How do I find it? Does it find you? Uh, maybe it does. Is it a calling? I don't know. I'm called to be an impressionist. Does something just kind of jump out at you mm -hmm. and that's what you need to do? That's that's know. my calling. That's the know. one thing. Or does it take slavish hours of intense study and work 
until it just emerges like a beautiful flower? That's a good question. I want to know the answer. Tell me, Kevin. What's the answer? Well, I can tell you oh. how I am. <laughs> I can tell oh. you. you got me on that one. Yeah. I can tell you how I defined mine. All right. Which is always, I think, is always going to be in an it, ever-evolving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's Your never going to be yeah. one thing or another. And Picasso's style, man, had exactly. his blue period. Even yeah, with all yeah, the big cubism, artists that yeah, define those styles. Yeah, your style is constantly going to be evolving. Still we'll changed. take that as a given. Yeah. No. I have Actually, I have a, a pretty good example that I found mm-hmm. for Van Gogh. Okay. Before, he was creating a, a bunch of really dark, uh, all these really dark paintings. Okay. And then one day, I found in my research, he found a colorful Japanese painting. Hmm. And then after that, he started painting happier paintings. That's interesting, because that actually reminds me, when I was in school, I had an uh, art professor who, that was his, his quote, basically, is what you just said. His really? quote was, steal. Artists are thieves, and you should steal, steal, steal. And I remember thinking, no. Yeah. Because then you're not going to be original. Right. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to steal from other artists and all that. And he was like, he was very adamant about it. Every artist steals. And I think that's, isn't it like how it's defined? It is. An artist actually. is, is yeah. thief well, or whatever. I mean, as, as I've kind of grown and developed, I've kind of begun to see what he meant by that. And he right. didn't mean copy. Uh, right. To develop your own style, you never want to copy directly from another artist. Right. But what you want to do is... Look for styles and look for techniques and things that you like and things you admire. Do you like the way they painted this? And you can tell that they used, you know, right, uh, paint right. thinner to create a drip effect here. And wouldn't that look good in this? And look at this other artist that's doing that. You want to borrow from multiple sources. Definitely. And if you borrow or steal <laughs> from multiple sources wow. and you combine them in your own way, then your work will be original and it will right. give you a style and things like that. So, and I think that's an interesting thing. This is what basically what you're talking about with Van Gogh. Because nobody, I mean, you can look at a Van Gogh painting and you know that's a Van Gogh. Right. I mean, yeah. Exactly. I mean, he has a unique style that is totally Definitely. original. Yeah. There's nobody going to. But he stole. Exactly. From a Japanese painting. So. 180. 180. There Completely you go. Completely flipped it. There you so, go. Makes yeah. total sense. And, and it's something that I. Yeah, I used to disagree with, but I've actually come around. And if you have enough people doing that, exactly. everybody stealing, borrowing from one another, that creates a genre of style. Exactly. Like Impressionism yeah. and things like that. Definitely. And, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, if, if you look at any modern paintings or mm-hmm. artists today, they all have hints of the Art Nouveau style or classic, Absolutely. or they just combine them all, mm-hmm. and then you get these amazing, uh, like, creepy looking paintings all right. those ones that are yeah. just like glassy and right uh, i can't even think of the magazine right now but it what is it it's i can't i don't know it. i don't we'll, we'll post that on the web page yeah look it look at it in the links below i'll yeah. find it and put it in there but yeah, yeah that is one of the most you know definitive examples that mm-hmm. i know of just everybody's style is compiled into Absolutely. this one thing yeah in this one book yeah yeah, we're actually lucky in that way to be at the at this stage in history where we have so many different styles to look at and combine right. into one genre. It's actually really lucky. High fructose. <laughs> yeah. That's the magazine. Okay. That it there you always go. it's I like you were candy. recommending some foods there. <laughs> it's like candy. It always gets me. Right. I can't remember it for some reason. I got you. Well, one thing too that I wanted to mention is that your style too, I mean, they're there are definitely you can steal and you can borrow from other people and all that. But right. I believe, and then maybe you'll disagree with me here, Kevin. Okay. But I believe that your style is, is built into you in a lot of ways. It's just the way you see the world. And that if you draw yeah. enough and you paint enough, you're going to notice a consistency there. Like, for example, I have a habit, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, of drawing people with really big eyes and as real similar shapes. And it's just mm-hmm. how I draw. And it's... It's a real cartoony style that I actually don't like. I don't right. like my own style. <laughs> I think which, you'll find that a lot yeah. if, you're, if you're really honest. Too. I think it happens. I think, yeah. it, I mean, and, and what you can do when you see things you don't like, like my own style, is you can work toward changing it. Well, what can I do to fix that? What can I do to make that better? And what, what part of that don't I like? And being absolutely objective 
Yeah. Analyzing your own work. Which is the hardest part. That is hard. So I, hard. Really, so hard. It really helps to have a, a friend like Kevin and I have out there. Third party. Probably going to listen to this podcast who likes to tell us what exactly is wrong with it. But uh, <laughs> but it is helpful. It is helpful. Because, it uh, you know, and, and as an artist, you grow that way. You right. develop you and you start. You can't grow unless you have an objective... Right outside opinion or some kind of objective look at what you're doing and where you need to improve. Right. And ultimately you need to listen to yourself more than you listen to anybody else. But definitely look at your work, pick and choose what you like about it, what you don't, and start developing and working on, right. well, I need to improve here. I'm not very exactly. good at hands. I need to do this. And, oh, you can see that I make the eyes too big. I need to hone that down a little bit. Definitely. And you're going to get this through practice. It's, yeah. I mean, if you... It'll, it'll, it'll come right. from itself. Exactly. It'll just work its way into your fibers. Yeah. Yeah. Your, exactly. your internal fibers, and yeah. it'll just show yeah. on the paper one day and there's definitely some things that no matter how hard you try you probably can't weed out because right. i definitely have some bad habits of mine that are just built in now and they're considered style yeah and uh and so but that's definitely... what you gotta do take your faults and turn them into your right. style right so so what we're saying here basically to yeah. summarize is that nobody's gonna have their perfectly unique style right off from the bat. You may. Oh, God. No, no. Definitely you may, not. but if you do a single drawing, that's not a style. That's a single drawing that's drawn a particular way. Right. A style is, by definition, a consistency over time. Exactly. Right. A, a so manner you, of doing right. something. Right. So you have to show a consistency. You have to do it a lot to do it. And right. don't be afraid. I think that's an important thing to remember. Yeah. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you're afraid of creating a shitty drawing. Right. That's gonna make this explicit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this podcast just became rated R, ladies and gentlemen. If you're if you're afraid of making a crappy drawing, <laughs> right? I don't know why I'm censoring it. Mm, too late now. <laughs> then you're gonna make a crappy drawing. Right. You need to work through those crappy drawings until you get to the prize, mm -hmm. and then take that one, and then elevate it a little higher. And so you just keep redefining and redefining that one style, and then it'll get. That's how you can measure it. Yeah. Every step. These are the crap. There's the gold. Take the gold. There's some more crap. Right. Take the gold. Measure it. And that's going. how you develop. That's how you hone or craft your art. Exactly. And that actually brings me to another point that I, I thought of and that I've agreed with for a long time. is uh, And maybe this story is apocryphal. I don't know. But I'd always heard growing up <laughs> that... Uh, that there was an artist, or I heard a story when I was younger, at least. I don't know. It wasn't like a story told at the campfire for a little young artist. But um, <laughs> but I'd heard a story when I was a kid about an artist who his style completely changed overnight. Completely. And I don't even know in the story, because I was a kid, and I don't even remember what artist this was. And if anybody finds out, email me, because I need to know. I, I tried looking it up, and I've never been able to find it uh, that story since. But anyway... The artist, his style completely changed overnight, radical change, and he was a famous artist already, so an interviewer went, and they were like, well, you know, what, what changed? What Why this, did your change? What was yeah. this thing? You know, and he told this interviewer, you know, because the interviewer is thinking that this is some deep change that he's making to represent his angst in life and, you know, all that, and he tells right. the uh, interviewer, well, I used to use round brushes, and now I use flat brushes, you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it was just a matter of changing the tools he used. The material. Used. Right, the material goods huh. that can create a style. Yeah. And that gets back to what you were saying a second ago, which is Definitely. confidence. You have to be confident enough and willing enough to try different things, try different mediums, oh, and just experiment. I... One of the things yeah. that I did when I was drawing, I, I guess I was drawing for so long I got tired of black and white drawings, mm -hmm. so I picked up pastels. Mm -hmm. And I'd use color pa pencils and all these other things mm -hmm. in high school, right. completely frustrated mm -hmm. with them. But, then I picked up the pastel, soft pastels, the chalk kind, right. and exploded with like eight different pictures in one night. Yeah. More productivity right. in my... Than ever. Than I had done the entire year. Yeah. So that was all based on changing all, the material. Yeah, just changing the material. Yeah. And it gave me a whole other way of looking at the style. Absolutely. And yeah. I took all that drawing and stuff that I had and I incorporated it into that medium too. Mm -hmm. right. So it's taking that one, even if you're crossing mediums, mm -hmm. that style still travels with you and it gets incorporated into those different mediums Absolutely. too. 
Yeah. So you got to kind of think, take that into account. Take it into too. account. Experiment. That be confident and experiment. Now, as a painter, because I, I I paint more than I draw, and I guess I draw what I paint. But uh, right. But you know, canvas and oil paint is so expensive that you're hesitant to mess up, and right. you don't want to mess up. And oh, this you know, I could go wrong. I need to plan it all out beforehand and all that. Forget about that. It's important to plan. Right. You know, but it's when you're at those beginning stages, when you're just, especially if you're just starting out as a budding artist, experiment and just play around with things and see where yeah. it gets you. See, learn how the paint interacts with the paintbrush. Learn, and you'll develop a style just from that interaction. Definitely. That's Absolutely. why I have the majority of the materials I have. Yeah. It's just from, just experiment. what does that look like? Yeah, I've got inks and things that I haven't used in years. Yeah, I have a whole box and of stuff. Every now and again, I'll happen. still break them out and, and yeah. play with them. And this is not something that's going to happen overnight, guys. But stick with it, and you'll definitely develop your style, yeah. I think. Sometimes you might just find it calling you. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I wonder what that is. Right. And then you pull out, and then you go into a whole nother, mm -hmm. a blue period. Exactly. Or some, you just, exactly. it just yeah. comes Which, out. And sometimes even that uh, you know, comes from a quirk or just a thing like, well, I don't have any money. All I can afford is blue paint. Exactly. You know, things like that happens. And Maybe you choose styles. three colors to make mm -hmm. all your paintings with. Yeah. There's your style. Yeah, that's all you need. Simple really. as that. Yeah. You don't have to make Absolutely. it any more complicated than it is. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. Yeah. Or put some constructive uh, constraints on your stuff. Right. That'll make you be more creative. Absolutely. Make you be more unique. And you'll have your own style. So it sounds like, kind of tie it all together, yeah. that our recommendations here to develop your own style and then the, the key points to remember is steal from a bunch of different sources. Yeah, go check out everybody. Everybody. Go to a museum. Yeah. Yeah, like Kevin last weekend went, went to, to a museum. Yeah. Went and to him and saw the yeah. posters of Paris. Amazing. There you go. And, uh... You know, Shepard Ferry borrowed heavily from money and uh, old propaganda posters oh, yeah, from World War II, which definitely. is interesting because I heard that he was suing another artist for stealing his style, even though he stole it from <laughs> propaganda posters. But there you that's, go. that's a whole other ball there. But, um, but yeah, so I, th I recommend bringing a pencil and a, and a pad with you everywhere you go, drawing, developing everything. Just keep drawing and yeah. keep developing and you'll you'll develop a style Just automatically. Keep keep the hand moving. Right. Keep the hand moving. You're gonna develop muscle memory. You're gonna develop things like that that are gonna help with your style. But also, you know, keep that discerning eye. Look out choose shapes and things that you find pleasing and things that you like and just keep pulling things you like in. Yep. And you're gonna develop a style just a, a based on your own personal aesthetic. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty so there good. we go. A quick little, oh. uh, quick little story. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, Chuck Close, I think, maybe yeah. before or after yeah. the. Uh, his style is super hyper realistic. Mm -hmm. Before that, he had a uh, stroke. Right. That's... And he had to paint in his bed. Right. And that's how his style with the those uh, the color came about. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely a good point. Yeah, his style is as yeah I. That's so a totally good point. Yeah, his style is based with... on his physical, exactly. yeah, limitations, and uh, and his art, I would say, is even more amazing and more impressive because of it. Uh, his, which his art's actually been a basis of a lot of other artists, uh, even computer-based programs oh, too. Yeah. Well, I think I, I may be mistaken on this because I didn't research this before the podcast, but uh, I think that he actually uses a computer to help in his art. I think he uses it to break down the colors, and that's how he. Uh, I may be wrong no, on that. I don't no? think so. Okay, all right. I'm pretty maybe wrong on that. Okay, I have a few right. books on that. All right, one. I thought that I thought that I'd heard. He that does or have assistants that. help him though. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I actually worked with one of his assistants in Colorado. It's pretty interesting. Nice. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chuck Close is definitely an amazing artist. That if you guys aren't familiar with, you should look up his work because that is a, a absolute textbook example of how your style can change exactly based on your life and yeah. what happens to you in life and his uh, uh both of his styles are amazing yeah and, it's, um, it's a remarkable yeah. switch and both are very unique i mean the man has yeah there's has style you can <laughs> yeah he's, he's got, got he's, style he's got style for everybody absolutely he's got enough for everybody yeah absolutely Right. Um, but yeah, he's an amazing artist. So I think that uh, I think that wraps it up. I so, think so. I think yeah. that's that's you know style in a, a twenty five minutes right there. Pretty and, good uh, nutshell. Yeah, and keeps 
you know, stay tuned. We'll definitely be hitting on some of these different styles more and more throughout different podcasts and probably yeah. focusing on each individual style. Yeah. I know the, I have a few yeah. that I lean towards more yeah. than others. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. yeah, go check out every style mm-hmm. you can. Museums, artwork, internet if you don't have any money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, internet's a great way to see Even different a library. styles. Yeah, just Google it. Google it. First time I saw Norman mm-hmm. Rockwell was in a library. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go with that. So Absolutely. go check it out. Find something that sticks, something that resonates, mm-hmm. and yeah. go deeper into it. And steal it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, steal it. Steal yeah. from every, borrow from everybody. So, and shoot us some emails about your thoughts on this. Shoot us a, yeah. what you think is style, something we might have missed, something you think is important. Uh, email definitely. us about what you want to hear future podcasts about. Just let us know. We'll yeah. definitely... Always know. in the comments right below or subscribe to the top left if... Whatever, wherever you're looking or watching this video, make sure you get on the list of so you can get these uh, every week as we yeah. push them out. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks a lot. See you next week. You've been listening to Articulate with Kevin and Sean. Subscribe on iTunes or check them out on drawingandcoloring.com. Always reminding you to keep it simple.